Hey guys, this was a video request by At Risk One. I want to see a little bit more about my uh, Cold Steel tie light. Um, I have the four-inch Zytel version. Um, it's a fast, smooth knife. Uh, as you can see, a stiletto-style blade. Um, it's uh, it's really nice. This has the Zytel handle scales. Uh, it's very strong. I believe it Zytel is a glass reinforced plastic or you know, polymer. Um, it's very very strong. Uh, you know the difference between like Zytel and G10 carbon fiber. They're obviously their their construction is a lot different, but for the most part, all of those fall in the same category in my mind, and that's just a uh, a very strong synthetic material. Uh, the point of using stuff like this is it's incredibly strong and it's incredibly light. Um, a big advantage with knives. You don't want a really really heavy knife. Uh, this is, uh, speaking of weight, this is kind of in the middle because of that Zytel. It's not very heavy, uh, although it's not really light either. Uh, it's got a liner lock. A nice thick liner. Uh, the thick liner itself, the lock, it's, the lock part is folded over, uh, so there's more contact here with the uh, base of the tang. Uh, it makes for very good, uh, um, very good contact. Uh, it's not going to unlock on you. There's no blade play in any direction, vertical or side to side. Um, like I said, it locks up really nice. Um, it's really smooth, opens fast. Pretty cool knife. Uh, this is about a $40 knife. As you see in the background here, I have one of uh, one of Cold Steel's uh, catalogs. A little bit of an older one, I think, maybe two two issues ago. But um, uh, what I want to show you the different some of the differences. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it already. This has a AUS 8A stainless steel blade, four inch. You have the five-inch version, which is just a beastly thing of a knife. Uh, massive. You know, I see this in my hand. This is a pretty good size. This thing is just huge, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, this version here is what I have in my hand, and then you have two different uh, titanium versions. Uh, the upgrade here, like I said, this is about a forty-dollar knife. The big beastly one's like fifty. It's not that much more. Um, this is about forty dollars. The one I have. Uh, the upgrade here is you're going from AUS 8A blade. Um, to a VG1, which is a good upgrade in the steel, and also you're getting like a high polished finish on that blade, uh, more so than on here. Uh, and you can see that kind of fingerprint right there. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, you're getting a, you're getting a uh, nice blade steel upgrade, and you're also getting a titanium handle, and this has a nice brushed finish, uh, kind of satin gray, and then this is about a hundred dollar knife, and then if you go up to the hundred and twenty or hundred and thirty dollar version. Uh, the next upgrade is just having that handle, that titanium handle, uh, anodized blue. And, uh, you know, it's hard to see from the picture, but it's very, very vibrant blue. Uh, I've seen uh, all these versions in life, you know, in real life, and uh, they're very nice. I've owned uh, this version here, uh, and then eventually traded off, and then I kind of missed it. That's why I went back and bought the cheaper version, uh, which is totally fine. I mean, this is Itel. It's not like... It's not like this one's great and this one stinks. It's just about personal preference. Uh, again, you're going to get a higher mirror polish on these uh, upgraded versions, though. Um, it's a really nice knife. I, I really like it. Uh, I actually did a... Uh, I have... Don't laugh, but I have a uh, old, old pair of jeans. I cut out just the pocket uh, for this video. Uh, I had used uh, most... I cut out most of the legs to make char cloth uh, for my fire starting kit. But anyway, I took this off so I wouldn't have to move my camera. But I can show you a couple things. Uh, first of all, how it sits in the pocket. Um, that'll give you an idea of what's exposed as far as how much handle. Uh, the pocket clip here. It's got a nice thick pocket clip. Uh, I don't particularly like this clip because it's very stiff. Uh, maybe because it's so thick. But uh, that's just my personal, uh, you know, something that I don't like personally. A lot of people see no, have no problem with it at all. Uh, but one thing that is a common problem is that this quillion or tang uh, on both sides, these are, it's kind of a sharp edge. Uh, it's not all that comfortable. Like if I choke up with a knife and I use my, put my thumb here, it's, it's very rough on the fingers. Now, that's, uh, it's bad when you're using the knife, but extremely good if you use this as a uh, Yuara stick. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly, Yuara or Yahara. Um, but anyway, that's uh, using this as an impact tool on uh, self-defense. You know, when, when striking an opponent, you have that exposed tang here. Uh, and then, then of course, having that being kind of rough 
uh, you know, really mess up your opponent. Um, but for the most part, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not street fighting and, and beating people up with this. I'm just using it. So in my in my case, it's uh, it's a drawback. It's an uncomfortable feature. But um, that's really my only gripe is that and the fact that this is very stiff. But anyway, I cut the uh, pocket out here really just to show you uh, how the feature on this, the kind of uh, opening feature. Now, when this is clipped, and I can't actually show you this uh, because it's kind of awkward not having it actually on like my pants like when I'm wearing it. But uh, when it's clipped in here, how this works is that as you you grab your uh, you grab your knife, kind of an over over grip like this, overhand grip, and as you're pulling out of your pocket, okay, this uh, tang here or quillion, as Cold Steel calls it, uh, is going to catch on the corner of your pocket. And as you're pulling out, pretend my finger is the corner of the pocket. Well, I'll just show you the corner of the pocket. As you're pulling it out, it's going to start opening the blade. So as you do a uh, continuous draw right out of your pocket, it's going to open the blade as it comes out. Uh, it's really nice. It works off the same principle as the waved feature uh, originally made by Emerson, the Emerson Wave, uh, and then um, Cold, uh, excuse me, uh, Spiderco had uh, gotten permission from Emerson to use the Wave, and uh, people love the uh, Spiderco Wave Endura and Wave Delica. It uh, works on the same principle. As you're pulling the knife out of your pocket, it's open and ready to go. So it, you know it, it's extremely fast. It's about the fastest you can have. A folding knife, you know, besides, you know, having a fixed blade, it's it's pretty much the fastest way you can get a blade open, the fastest feature. Uh, it's really nice, it's very popular, and again, Cold Steel has its own kind of version of this where it's going to catch on the uh, on your pocket there as you open it. Now, that's a drawback for some people because some people want to take their knife in and out of their pocket and not have to worry about it opening. Some people just want to take it out to, you know, put it on the dresser or whatever. And unless you're kind of used to this, it can catch and open when you don't want it to open. And that's uh, that couldn't be a drawback. It really depends on uh, what you like and, and what, what's, uh, what you consider uh, tolerable, I guess. Um, but it's a really nice knife. You know, it fits, fits nice in the hand. It's comfortable. Uh, it's comfortable to use, it, you know, as long as you're in a position like this, you know, or in reverse uh, grip. Um, but like I said, those, uh, those, the tang here. Uh, or guards are just a little bit, little bit on the rough side, but um, it's a nice knife. I really like it. Uh, if you can afford the upgrade to the uh, titanium version, that's a really, really nice upgrade, in my opinion. You're getting a better steel. The higher polish looks a little classier, um, and that titanium handle is definitely really nice. But uh, this one here, perfectly fine. If you want to drop forty on a knife, it, it's a great purchase. I uh, can't say enough about it. I mean, people love them. Uh, cold steel knives in general, it's kind of weird. Cold steel gets a, um, they, people either love cold steel or they hate them. And it's not the knives themselves, really, uh, so much as it is Lynn Thompson, which is the uh, owner, CEO of cold steel. People don't like how he conducts business. Um, he puts down other companies. That's something that, uh, a lot of uh, knife companies just don't do. It's kind of an unwritten rule. You talk about how good your product is, but you don't put down other people. And that's what Lynn Thompson does. Uh, but, you know, I don't agree with it at all. But I, have, I, look, I look at it as a uh, business, in a business aspect. And I understand the man's trying to sell his, his products and he you know, does what he has to. Um, but some people just don't like that kind of uh, approach to it. Um, puts people off the knives. Uh, I buy knives that I like. I don't really get caught up in the politics. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with any of the uh, Strider uh, drama, but um, I don't get caught up in the politics of it. If I like the knife, I buy the knife. And that's why I purchased this knife and a couple different cold steel folders. Um, but uh, again, if you if you like the knife, cool. Uh, you know, check one out. Go pick one up. Uh, they're very nice. Uh, once again, thank you for your time.